Hi, I'm Sean Coonerty. I'm a partner with Siegel & Coonerty. We're a personal injury and medical malpractice law firm that practices in New York City. Today I'm going to talk to you about another aspect of slip or trip and fall accidents and how you can prove your case. One of the ways that's very important to prove a case is by photographs. Whether they be photographs of the actual condition or just of the general area where the accident took place. Let me tell you why they're important. A picture, as we all know, speaks a thousand words. And when, at the end of the day, an attorney goes to try a case based on a trip and fall accident, it's a million times better, or at least a thousand times better, if you put up a big photograph in front of the jury and say, this is what caused my client to trip and fall. This is what caused my client to slip or fall. Photographs can be taken at the scene as soon as possible after the accident. Hopefully, if it was a slip and fall accident and there was a water substance or some other type of slippery substance, that can be captured in a photograph. Sometimes it may have been cleaned up, but what you might be able to see is you might be able to see some form of leak evidence. That is, something draining from a ceiling in the ceiling tiles. Maybe you can see a stain on the floor or coming down the walls. Photographs can be very important. When it comes to a case of a pothole or a difference in height between sidewalk flags or, or um, broken steps or things of that nature, a picture can be invaluable because normally speaking that will not have been repaired yet and you can go and you can take a photograph that shows the actual condition and a witness is able to say that's exactly the way it looked like when that person tripped and fell. That segues into the next part of proving a case of a slip and fall accident witnesses. You can either have a witness to the actual event and or a witness to the notice condition. That is, notice that the defendants in the case knew about the dangerous condition or through their own normal course of business should have known about the condition and either way did something to make it no longer dangerous. It's great to have a witness to the actual incident. I'll tell you this because insurance companies are automatically not going to believe that your accident happened the way you say it happened. They're going to want to say, you know what, you tripped over your own feet, or you must have fallen in your own house, not in front of this business establishment, or something of that nature. Having a friend that was with you, or better yet, an absolute a bystander that you don't know at all, come in and say, I saw it, that's what happened, she tripped in that pothole, she broke her ankle. The notice condition can be very important as well. Because someone can come in and say, you know what, I was in that store three hours before that person had that slip and fall, and I too almost slipped in that water that was on the floor, and I complained to the manager about it. They must not have done anything about it. That can be a good case. Lastly, to prove a slip and fall accident, just like any other case of personal injury or medical malpractice for that matter, you have to prove that the slip and fall or the trip and fall actually caused you a bodily injury. It's not enough to say, I slipped. I grabbed onto something, I almost fell down, oh my god, I was so scared, I could have broken my arm. Could have and almost, although they're terrible things to happen, they do not translate into an actual lawsuit. You may have questions. I encourage you to call me, 212-532-0532. Let's talk more about slip or trip and fall accidents. I can answer your questions, I can give you the peace of mind of knowing what your rights are under the law. Thank you for watching this video.